In the other video uh, with this particular object painting topic, we started with a no time, but this one I wanted to be um, a little more pure about just starting straight in with the monochrome. And we're using three colors here. We're using black, bone black, titanium white, and cadmium red light. Um, you know, any black, white, and another color will work. But these are kind of nice because it gives you a good range of values and shades and you can do a little bit of warm cool transition um, the other option would be to use like yellow or something like that blue might not work might not work as well because you don't have as much um, options for the warm tones so here we're going to go straight into it after mixing and just establish some of the initial shapes this probably isn't well, definitely isn't the right value ultimately that we're going to wind up with, but this is a good place to start because it's just giving us a baseline to work from that's not the white of the paper. And that's kind of our first main job here is to do that. So um, once we have this, this major plane of this bench established, everything's going to get a little bit easier because we can follow this shape and use that as the basis. And here I'm just plopping it dead center. Um, because this is an object study, it's not a compositional study. So if we were going to do a fully realized painting, we'd probably want to make the layout a little better. But since we're only really working here on, on just the challenges of painting an object and getting dimensional form and working through value shift and color shift, we can simply focus on the object itself and keep it very simple. So what I look for here is I kind of placed a middle grade down and that gives me a good foundation to work from because I can lighten and darken based on that. And once I have the sort of middle gray, dark and light that are on the top of this bench a little bit laid out, that's going to give me the um, decision making framework that I need to progress through the rest. Like I can kind of see that this to differentiate, I'll need to probably darken this front side of the bench and then um, make sure that the value that I put on the, on the long side is a little lighter than on the short side of the bench. And I can continue that same value downwards because it's all in the same plane. There might actually in the reference photo be slight differences in value. But I can, for practical purposes, kind of ignore that uh, for now because I don't need to differentiate one section from another if they're on the same general plane. And when I'm sketching like this, in the interest of time, I like to do a lot of brush mixing um, because it's not as fussy. The side effect of brush, brush mixing is that it pushes the value range all towards the middle because everything kind of gets mixed in with each other, which is fine um, because that allows you to use subtle differentiations and it can help you save the the impact of the big distances of value, like the absolute black and the absolute white for when you really need it. The thing about using pure black and pure white is that you lose color. Um, by its very nature, like you, if you use pure white, there's no color in that. If you use pure black, there's no color in that. So working with the middle of the value range allows you this opportunity to use a bunch of color. And even though we're only using one color, that one color is going to kind of affect everything in this entire painting. So in order to keep things kind of simple, we have to get this background done. And uh, I think the, the way that you would approach it is more or less to just cover it with red. And to make things more interesting, what you can do is kind of do a, a slight value and or color transition through the whole ground plane and just kind of make sure that there's something going on in terms of some kind of activity. And when you transition value and color, that gives the illusion that there's light. Um, and that's really kind of a nice thing to include in your paintings, uh, the sense of light. So here, this is just a relatively middle value, darkish, middle red color. And 
I'm not really thinking too much about brush stroke direction. I'm just thinking about covering the paper. That's the main goal. You know, this is my my drawing teacher for um, for a couple of years. Always said that the you know 90% of drawing is covering the page, and at least at the beginning, that's true. You know, and same with painting. Once you get everything covered, then you can start making critical decisions. Um, and that's going to help you out a lot. So here what I've done is I've laid out a slightly lighter red. And it's a little more muted. And um, that's going to begin the value transition in this whole area. Um, the other main thing to think about is ground shadows. And we'll get into that in just a bit. So... Um, here I use like a lot of matte medium uh, to thin the paint down so that it's not real thick. Um, paint buildup can be problematic if you do a lot of layers. Um, and here, since we're doing wet and wet, it's um, it's good to use um, every trick that you have in the book. And uh, when you thin down with matte medium, you can see that there's like a slight transparency to it and acrylic dries so fast that in the space of a 20 minute painting like this one or really it's a 15 close to a 15 minute painting um, some of the paint will dry during that time and that allows you to put transparent paint on top of it and you can get interesting effects that you couldn't get just by mixing directly um, and that's just something to keep in your back pocket if this is one of the first paintings that you made then really what I want you to worry about is just seeing shapes and seeing value differentiations and color differentiations. Um, sometimes it's good to introduce colors that aren't necessarily there, you know, because we're doing this like very limited palette thing and there's green in the reference and some blue in the reference. We're kind of limited. Like we can't put, blue in and we can't put green in so we have to kind of make some decisions about what we want the painting to look like and fortunately like leaves and dirt are kind of like orange brown red um, so it's not that jarring to make a red ground um, anyway and this bench is kind of a gray so we're kind of fortunate in that respect that we can um, that we can create this painting this way. Um, sometimes you get a lot of paint buildup on the brush itself when you're brush mixing. And so I like to have a palette knife around just to kind of scrape it off. And, um, and especially when I'm switching to like distinctly different colors. And so here's a little bit of pure black. I wanted to push the value differentiation in the shadow because this is a cast shadow and cast shadows tend to be dark, sharp shadows. Um, I can then kind of soften that and make it more of like a gradient um, later if I want. But that's just kind of a visual note to self to really push that value down. Um, and here, because I I'm surrounded by red, this color has just a hint of red in it. And that's because we're getting a little bit of like light, ambient light bouncing back in the shadow. Um, and that I feel like is a, is a nice thing to include when colors bounce off of each other and affect each other. So this side I'm lightening up significantly um, because I have the room to, and I've also introduced some red into this color. And you'll see that once I use this red here, it begins to unify the bench with the background, which I think is really important. Um, the thing about if you don't use kind of all of the colors all over the place, it creates a situation where the painting breaks apart. Um, so a simple way to unify things is if you have a limited color palette like this, you have to make sure that you, know, you get some grays on the background and then you get some reds in the foreground and in this object. So you can look at any particular area and every area has all three of those colors in it. Now, if I had introduced green as well, I would want some green and some red in this bench too. So um, that's just something to keep in mind and, and, you know, add to the mix if you're comfortable working with value shifts and shapes. 
So this is another thing too that that we think about a lot in painting is just you're limited to shapes and and big chunks of of shapes and it depends on the brush you're using and um and your materials as to how those can be applied you know we don't want to get too fussy and get the really tiny tiny brushes out and get a lot of details painted in we just want the general idea of this this isn't an exercise in rendering and paint this is an exercise of just being able to see shapes see values and get comfortable with the medium you know we can render and paint later um, and you could even take this painting and continue rendering it for forever and um, that could be potentially interesting but um, I think it's more fun to just push the paint around and get comfortable with the medium and stay loose and see these shapes and um, try out a bunch of colors make mistakes have fun with it and really try to like enjoy the the process and the feel of the medium without a lot of pressure to get something super finished and perfect um you know i i stay pretty loose when i'm painting like this you can see that none of the edges are really sharp or precise i'll run paint over and back over on certain edges i think one of the worst things you could do is like really section these off and paint section by section and mix this color directly and just kind of have really overly sharp edges um, you know you, you can do a graphic painting style which is like where you have sharper edges but you kind of give that just a little bit of control so you have like on your initial layer you might go over an edge and then bring it back on a, on a subsequent layer and then play around with how that edge goes and you can see that on some of the edges i'm going with the paint going with the edge and other times i'll go up to it at a um, sort of perpendicular 90 degree angle um, run the flat edge of the brush to it and using both of those gives it a nice variety um, and i can pick and choose where i want to emphasize edges or, sh or really sharpen edges based on that um, Let's see here. Here I'm just kind of like sneaking in to this uh, the shadow range, trying to determine how red I want it to be and how dark I want it to be so that it differentiates properly. Um, and also how big the shadow is. The reference is taken on a, on a very kind of cloudy day, so there's a lot of ambient light. So there's not a really direct cast shadow, but including a little bit of direct cast shadow, a little bit of that information can help. Uh, even though it's not necessarily there um, and drawing experience will help with that for sure um, i think there's a, a good relationship of drawing and painting that's to be used to your advantage because drawing can help you see shape and it can help you see composition um, and sometimes you'll you'll do some preparatory drawings for your paintings um, but here we're kind of we're not doing that because we just want to get right into the paint and get comfortable with the paint and not spend a lot of time on the on the drawing aspect because I can kind of slow it down. Um, later on, we can get into some prep, some ideas about how to do preparatory drawings and to really um, learn how to plan a painting better. But um, for a 15 to 30 minute painting on paper, I don't think you need to plan it out that much because you're time and material investment isn't so great that it'll be a tragedy if it doesn't turn out you know i think that that's the um advantage to doing little little acrylic paintings on on paper this is just a six by eight piece of paper um you can play around with it have fun with it and then you know if you don't like it you can toss it you know or paint over it or turn the paper over and paint or draw on the back so um i think and then you're also not using like a lot of paint either so that your material cost isn't very high either. So um, here what I'm working on is just creating that, um, that transition. One of the nice things about creating a, 
uh, transition is that it adds like a lot of immediate interest to the to the painting and you'll notice that the transitions at a diagonal angle so um, if you echo the angle of the you know keep it horizontal or vertical just like the piece of paper it's a little more it's a little more boring um, so if you make your your transitions like diagonal it's a little more dynamic a little more interesting now you may want at certain times to to make a boring transition because something the focus is so active but here it's relatively static it's just a bench it's not like a super interesting crazy complicated form it's a simple form um, so we can do a lot with just simply transitioning uh, light to dark in the background and creating a nice cast shadow to make the piece interesting as a whole and here we're nearing kind of the end you know once this is covered and you have the all of the shapes reading distinctly then you're nearing the finish you know the goal of this painting is really just to um, do a bare minimum mi minimum of work to establish what we need to establish to make everything read correctly and beyond that you're getting into the mid the middle and finish points of of the painting and that's not really where we want to take this you know we want this to stay relatively towards the beginning to work on how we're establishing shapes and forms and um, that's all we want to do in these paintings is is when we're at this sketching stage to really be sure that we have a handle on how to begin a painting well um, there there's a specific skill there that i think is really important and um, if you learn how to establish a painting you can quickly determine whether the painting is going to be successful where it needs to go and what you need to do to change it before you finish it um, the last thing that you want to do and is to sink a lot of time into a painting and then realize that you didn't do something correct at the beginning and you need to make a bunch of changes to fix it um, so we're kind of setting ourselves up so that that doesn't happen um, and here i'm just laying in this last ground shadow and That'll be it for this painting.